Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Hey, today we're going to talk about inputs and mixes, and I wanted to do a deep dive on this because it's one of those key areas of OpenTX that you have, you simply have to understand it. And if you don't understand it, it's going to make programming your radio difficult. And one of the things that kind of spurred me to make this video today is a question that I got this week, and I don't want to call out any names, but so I'm not going to give the specific question, but I just want to say that there was a question about how a starting input resulted in a, a very different output. And when I see questions like that, it's alarming to me because you have to understand inputs and mixes and outputs on OpenTX if you want to have some success. But before I get into the video, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a preview of what's going to happen today. This is about the sorriest group of people I've seen in all my entire military career. Go oh, easy on me, okay? It's my first time. I just want to seriously say I have a small fear of flying. I'm gonna twist you. And I'm gonna flip you. Do you do? Wrap your body till your bones hurt. When you squeal, it's gonna go faster and harder. No, let me down! Yeah, as I was putting this material together, I thought about that scene, and that's one of my uh, one, one of my all time favorite movies in the first place. I think that it was Bruce Willis's best work ever. But uh, that that's kind of what I thought about when I put this one together. Is that I am going to twist you a little bit, and I need you guys to kind of embrace where we're going to go with this because I think if you leave here. And, and ask your questions and you understand what's going to happen today, that you'll be far better equipped to build that perfect model configuration than when you got here. So with that said, I'm going to paint the scenario a little bit. The first thing I want to do is direct your attention to the radio and show you that I have a very basic setup here, right? I've got inputs uh, for only aileron and elevator. So what I want to do is simulate a wing. Let's just imagine we're working with a wing today. Also notice no, no throttle and no rudder because not not relevant. You'll get the point with the just the aileron and elevator. I also want to show you something else too. I'm going to move this switch. I should zoom out just a little because I need you to see the switch. So I'm going to move this switch, this one right here, and I want you to pay attention to what's highlighted on the screen. So I have 100 highlighted. I'm going to move my switch and now I have 75 highlighted. And also on the elevator I've got 70 highlighted. So as I move the switch, I can go from up, middle, and down, and this is moving, but notice there's no switch activation over here. So what's that magic about, right? That's, that's going to be one concept that we're going to cover in just a moment. So the arrangement that I want to set up is I'm trying to kind of mimic the co-pilot a little bit. And the co-pilot, the way that one works is you have manual mode, stabilize mode, and then return to home or some other similar combination, right? It's one, the down switch is manual, the middle switch is stabilized, the up switch is return to home, right? That's a pretty basic normal for a flight computer. So yeah, that was Armageddon. Yeah, that was Armageddon. You have to watch the replay. So yeah, and by the way, I'm going to say hello real quick. Michael Matthews was first in. And then uh, Jeff, how you doing? Andre, Pterodactyl, Jim, how are you? Brian, uh, welcome, to the, welcome to the video. Yet another RC channel. Welcome, Andre. I already got you, North 49. Hello, Pete and FL Engineer. Welcome, welcome guys. Thanks for joining. Okay, so basic configuration is, is uh, switch down. That's manual. Switch in the middle, stabilize. Switch up is return to home. Now, the first thing that I want to cover is the relationship between inputs and your mixer. And here's the important part. Whatever the output is on your input, whatever the result is here, that feeds the mixer. So if you look at these icons up top, you see this is the input input tab, and they use that, that icon all over the radio. And, and, don't, and you got to pay attention to the iconography because it does matter. This is the input tab and it gives you, there's an indicator that, hey, there's an input named ale right here. And that uses that same icon, that same input icon. Okay, so now what will happen is we have an input defined at 100% and we're calling it the aileron. Now that input feeds the mixer, okay? So what ends up happening here is we start with 100%. And in this particular instance, you see I have 100% is bold. All right, that's bold. Now when I feed that 100% bold on the aileron to the mixer, 
the mixer is going to do something with it. In this case, it's using a 50% weight. By the way, this is a very traditional wing setup. I've got aileron, elevator, elevator, aileron. Very traditional wing setup. And um, I'm gonna go on the model channel monitor to show you this, okay? So I'm just gonna click on the channel monitor and watch what happens when I move my stick. You see, that's that's very traditional wing setup, right? You've got a left aileron, right aileron, and then if I move my elevator, you can see they both go in the same direction when I go down, and they both go in the same direction when I go up. That's a very traditional flying wing mix, okay? So let's go back now and see what happened here. And this is the math that I wanna show you, and, and I wanna point out that when I started the aileron mix, I started it at 100%. And this is a very key concept for why we put rates in the input tab and not in the mixer tab. You can do it in the mixer tab. You can arrange it in the mixer tab. I'm not saying it won't work. I'm saying it's a very poor practice. And, and so here's why. We're starting with 100% and we're feeding that to the mixer. And the mixer takes that aileron and multiplies it by a weight of 50%. So that's a half. Now, when I bring the model monitor back up, you can see that 100% is fed into the mixer. The mixer is multiplying it by half, but I can turn that mix off. Um, and let's see, when I turn that mix, when I use, yeah, I, I jumped ahead a little bit. The second line that I have is 75%. So I have a 75% aileron with 20% expo. The expo is not material here, but when I activate that 75%, what I'm feeding is not 100% weight, I'm feeding 75% weight into the mixer, and then the mixer is gonna multiply that by half. So if we get our calculator out really quick and take 75 times 0.5, that gives us thir about 38%. So if we look at our model channel monitor, and, you, and I move that stick with a 75% input, you can see the output is only 38%. Okay, does that make sense? So that's a demonstration of the math relationship between the mixer and input. It's the final value on your input screen that gets fed to your mixer. Your mixer takes that number, whatever it was fed, and multiplies it by its weight to determine what gets fed to output. Now, we saw that I have, with the stick in the up position, so I have, I'm feeding it 100%, and the mixer is multiplying it times 50, so we have an output of 50%. Now, in the output screen, you notice that I have another multiplier. So right now, I've got a multiplier of 100, and 100 on the low end, 100 on the high end. If I go in here and, and change this multiplier and say, cut it in half again, so I'm just gonna scroll down to 50. Here's the quiz part. Anyone wanna take a crack at what my output's gonna be if I use 100 as the input? 50 is the mix and 50 is the output. Anybody want to take a swing at that one? There's the quiz. So let's see if anyone, let's see if anyone wants to pop off on the answer on that one while I set this up. So I'm just going to scroll down to 50 on this one, on the, on the min, and I'll set 50 on the max. I don't see any answers to the quiz question yet. I told you there'd be a quiz in the thing. You guys aren't, uh, got, got to be ready. Got to be ready. Who wants the gold star today? 50 says Brian, 25, oh, Carol, Carell, 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 I think is on it. So yeah, what we're doing is we're doing it again. So the mixer, the input feeds the mixer, the mixer feeds the output, okay? So if we start with an input of 100, and then we feed that to our mixer and it multiplies it by 50, the output is 50. Now, if we feed that to the output and multiply it by half again, it's 25. So let's go into the monitor and we'll prove that. Now, here's the interesting thing. Notice the difference in these two lines, okay? So in this, in this line, I've got 50 on the mixer, but look at the output, the blue line is only 25. So the mixer, mixer's taking the input at 100% and that's what it sees. So the mixer takes that input of 100%, multiplies it by half, and then when you move that stick, the mixer says, okay, I'm, I'm, my output, what I'm sending to the outputs is this. It's sending the 50% to the outputs. That's where you can see, that's where this bar, this, the graph on the bottom comes in handy. This is what the mixer is doing. This is what the output's doing. So you can see a discrepancy between the two. Here's your mix line. Here's your output line. That 
Carol got it right. It's 25, and so did Nor uh, so did Tube E360. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris says, what was the question? That's pretty funny. Uh, you're the class clown today, Chris. So, uh, but the output is 25, and the reason that happened is because when we go and look at the output, I took what the mixer fed me, and I multiplied it by half again. These are very simplistic examples, and personally, I've never done this. I've never, the only time I've ever really used outputs is to control endpoints for things like Castle Creations ESCs and Betaflight 9F. So I've never tried this technique, but I wanted you guys to see what it does, what the relationship is between inputs, mixes, and outputs. And this was the most simplistic way I could do that. So again, whoops, went, went, to, went the wrong way. So let's start with the input. We're starting at 100%. We're, we're cranking in a 50% weight on the mixer. So that brings us down to 50% and the mixer shows 50%, and now the output hits it with another 50% weight, cutting it down to 25%, okay? So that's the relationship between the inputs, the mixers, and the outputs when it comes to math. That's an important concept to grasp because what you don't wanna do is have different weights and mixes in different places and then try and figure out how, why am I starting with 70 and winding up with 39 when I flick a certain switch? That's what creates the problem. So let's, um, let me back up and say, let's, let's take a look at this one. So if I put it in 75% mode and we have a 50 reduction and a 50 reduction, who wants to predict what happens there? So we take 75% and we'll do that times or divide times 0.5, right? So that's 30, 37.5. And then we'll do it again times 0.5. And that gives us 18.75. So if I use 75% as my initial rate, and then I feed that to the mixer at 50%, and then the output at 50%, we should see an output of 18.75. And let's see if that's what we get. So check it out. Eight, we got 38, which is normal. That's correct, because we fed, remember, we only fed 75% to the mixer in the first place. Remember that? And then you can see our output is only 19 or, you know, 18.75, which comes out, you know, it's rounding to 19. Okay. 2, 2B360, you're on it, man. You got it. You got it. You nailed it. Okay. So that was the important bit. Now here's the part where I'm going to twist your mind. If you go back to the initial set, the, the initial setting, I, I kind of showed you guys that I had this input arrangement set up where, why is it that I can change these values with a switch? when I don't have a switch to find. Does anybody know the answer? Let me see if anybody has caught on to what I'm doing. In companion, can you see all three variables on one screen? No, I don't think so. I think, um, no, you have, I'm not sure, to be honest, Jeff, I'd have to look. I'd have to bring up companion and look. Does anybody know, has anybody figured out how I'm able to change these values on the input screen from this one to this one? with no switch assignment right here, flight mode. Andre, Andre's on it, there you go, flight mode. So let's talk about flight modes a little bit. So I wanna use, I wanna use flight modes and show you guys some tricks. Now it might, might be hard to see, but look how this is gray and black and black. So this one's grayed out, zero's grayed out, and then I have one, two are bold, and then the rest are, are grayed out. And then on this one, I've got Number three is bold and the rest are grayed out. Zero, one, and two are gray, four, five, four through eight are gray, okay? Same thing with the elevator, okay? So Andre jumped on it, it, he, it is flight modes. And then the same thing in the mix, by the way, if you didn't notice down here, I have some flight modes set up for the mix because you can use input, you can use flight modes for your inputs and your mixes both. So let's go back and I'm gonna show you my flight modes first. Well, actually, yeah, I'm gonna show you the flight modes first, then I'm gonna show you a little bit about trims, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm using those in inputs and mixes, all right? This is actually a fair, this is the part where I'm, Andre, you are good. This is the part where I said in the video with the, uh, with the Arma intro that I'm gonna twist you a little bit because this is new. This is a new layer, but there's, a, there's an option here, and the reason I came up with this arrangement is because I've got a plane that has a flight computer in it that when I've, I've done board stabilization six times, and when it's in manual mode, the thing, or when it's in return to home or stabilized mode, the plane flies perfectly flat. No trim, it flies perfectly flat, straight as an arrow. But oddly enough, when I put it in manual mode with no trim, 
it noses down just a little bit. So I'm not exactly sure how to correct that. I'm not sure. Um, and what I wound up doing was doing a little bit of a mechanical correction by saying, all right, in my manual mode, I'm going to have its own trim. And that's what these numbers indicate. So you see this colon three, I paired that up with the flight mode three for manual mode. And what that means is that when I'm in manual mode, I have trims used in flight mode or ma or flight mode three, which is my manual mode. So they use their own trims. When I'm in return to home or stabilize, they're using trim values from flight mode one, which is return to home mode. So return to home and stabilizer. So whenever the computer is active, it's using trim from the return to home mode and or, and or the stabilize mode. They're the same thing. And in those cases, when I'm in one of those flight modes, I have no trim. So here, here's the deal. You can see on the bottom, hopefully you see this little RTH. That's one nice thing about the Radio Master and OpenTX is that you can put your flight mode down at the bottom. So I've got return to home here, stabilize here, and manual mode here, okay? So let me show you the cool thing about this. When I put it in manual mode, let's just say for argument's sake, I need my elevator, you know, I know this is not ideal, right? It's just a demo. Just a demonstration. So I've got my my tr my elevator trim all the way down here, right? I moved it all almost all the way to the bottom. Now watch what happens when I flick this switch back to the middle position and leave manual mode. Watch the elevator trim. So I'm going to click it into the middle position. There you go. Look it. It went right back to the middle. And if I go to the return to home mode, it stays there in the middle. If I come back down to manual mode, it goes down to the bottom. So the idea is that using flight modes. You can have flight modes use trims for the mode they're in, right? And that's what I've done here. I've got my manual mode with its own own trim separate from that on the computer. Now, if for some reason, and I'm not recommending it, but I'm just throwing it out there. If for some reason in these other two modes, you wanted to have a little bit of a different trim, I just want to illustrate the point. Let's go ahead and move this one up a little bit. And you can see that when I'm in stab mode or return to home mode, that trim value stays right there. I'm moving the switch, right? See, I'm moving the switch up and in, into these two modes, back and forth, that trim value stays there. When I move it all the way down, my trim comes all the way down to the bottom, okay? So hopefully you can see the idea on what I did with the trim switches and why I set those up the way I did in the flight modes. Again, I'm not recommending that you use trims of the flight computer. The ideal scenario is that you work out what's going on. Uh, and so far in my case, I haven't been able to work it out yet, so I'm using the radio as a crutch. Okay, so also notice that all I did was add labels for flight mode one, flight mode two, and flight mode three, return to home, stab, and manual mode. I have SC up for return to home, SC mid for stabilizer, and SC down for, for manual mode, and again, Return to home, any of the computer modes, they're using the same trim and manual mode uses its own trim. And also note that I turn off trims for five and six. That's what these dashes indicate. So if you click on one of these rows and go over here, you can see that this line right here represents trim five and this one represents trim six. That's that one and that one. And the reason I turn those off is because by turning them off, I can use them as momentary switches for something else. Um, if you're a glider guy or you have a configuration where you need those trim switches, obviously you have a different use case. I'm just talking about for a basic, you know, four channel fixed wing plane. This, this is a good technique because now I can use those as momentary switches. Okay. So there's the flight mode. Now let's show you, let's show how to use the flight mode. All right. Notice that in my input screen, I've got aileron is bold right now, and I have my switch in the up position or the mid position. So when I'm either up or mid in either of those two positions, the aileron is bold. All right. And that's because in the configuration, let me show you the configuration in the configuration. I came down here to flight modes. And if you click on this, you can say you can use your jog dial and move it back and forth. And when the flight mode is bold, it's, that means it's active in that flight mode. And when it's gray, it means it's not active. So if I didn't want these aileron, if I didn't want this aileron input to be active in flight mode one, I could simply highlight the number one, put the highlight on there and then long press the jog dial and it goes gray. All right. That means it's no longer active in flight mode one. That makes sense. Okay. Just press it again. It comes on bold and now it's active in flight mode one. So earlier in the video, I said, hey, you know, how is it that I'm using the switch? I don't have a switch definition here, but as I move the switch, I'm able to change my inputs. It's because I used flight modes as the determining factor of when that particular mode was on. So how does this manifest itself in flight? 
if I'm in a computerized mode, so middle or up, remember middle is man, uh, stabilized mode and up is return to home. If I'm in one of those modes, I have no expo and I'm sending 100% weight to my flight computer, okay? So that's in flight mode, stabilized or return to home. 100% weight, no modifiers, no expos. If I'm in manual mode, and this really plays out in an airplane like the Dart, and let me get the Dart. With the stabilizer, this plane is super easy to fly, but when you're flying it in manual mode, you might wanna reduce those rates a little bit. So this is a technique you can use on a plane like this one to kind of make it a little easier to fly when you're in manual mode. But when you're in the computerized mode, you really, it works great at 100% weight. So if you're in a manual mode though, you might want to flick this into manual mode and have a lower input. So same deal in this case, I have a 75% weight and a 20% expo, and that is only active when I'm in flight mode number three or manual mode, okay? And then you can see I just really did the same thing with the elevator. That's all this is, it's just the same exact concept. I just applied it to the elevator, all right? Now, the, the last thing I want to show you is in the mixer, Let's say for argument's sake, you notice when I have this all the way up, um, and let's change the scenario of just a touch. Let me suggest to you for a moment that um, what if you're flying a 3D plane and in, in 3D flight mode, for example, in a 3D flight mode, you want your ailerons and elevators mixed together. So when you pop your elevator, your, both your ailerons go with it, okay? You could do the same, con that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So by putting your switch, say, up in 3D flight mode, you can have that mix work so that when you move your ailerons and elevators, they both work together on the airplane. But if you say, all right, I'm done with 3D flying and I wanna land the plane, you can put a flight mode together that says, take that mix out, uh, take that mix off. I don't wanna have that mix anymore. So in, in the non 3D mode all the way down, notice that the mix went away. If I look at the monitor, now all I have is aileron and elevator. There is no mix, okay? So that's another trick you can use with flight modes. And let me show you the configuration for that real quick. All I did was on the mix line, the thing that does the mix. So this is the thing that needs to be mixed, the aileron. And this is the thing that does the mixing. All I did was turn that on for a certain flight mode. So in flight mode one or two, say 3D or, or pattern, for example. Um, so, so say that's pattern, that's 3D. Um, this mix would be active. And then if I'm in, you know, landing mode down, um, the mix is inactive and that's the idea. So again, the way that manifests itself in the monitor, uh, just imagine for a second that I'm, I'm using my elevator and I want my ailerons to go with my elevator. You, you can set up a mix to do that. So your both aileron and elevator move together. And if you say, nope, I don't want that mix anymore. I'm just landing the plane. You can turn that off and that mix is now off, and now we're back to a straight up elevator and straight up aileron. Now, here's the coup de grace for the whole thing, all right? The reason that we put our rates and our modifications to our weights in the input screen is because if you put them in your mixer, you have to add rates for this combination and this combination. So it, right now, I have on the mixer, I just have aileron and elevator. That's situation number one, and they're being fed 100%. If I wanted to use 75% as a value, then I would have to recreate this. I'd have to recreate an aileron and elevator mix down here, uh, down at the bottom. I'd have to assign the flight mode to, to do it, and it would have to match up to what I've got on the mix. So, and, and you'd also have to do that for your elevator. Now imagine adding a third scenario. You'd have to have six pair or two or three pairs or six line items for each surface. And that becomes very convoluted to do from a configuration standpoint. That's, whoops, that's why we use rates on the input tab because now this feeds the aileron no matter what. So when I look out, what I do here, it feeds the aileron no matter what I'm doing in the mixer, okay? So when you see that aileron input, that's impacted by what the input screen is sending to the mixer, all right? I hope that makes sense, but again, it's, it's something I see all the time. I, I hear people, I get questions on it all the time. Hey, why I'm putting my rates in my mix screen and here's what's happening. Don't do it that way. I'm telling you, don't do it that way. Set, set, your, set your rates up 
in your input screen. And that way, whatever you do here, it simply feeds whatever your mix arrangement is on the other side. And now that you've seen the math, you know how to do the math. You know how to figure out what's going to happen. Okay. Hey, I want to remind you guys, because we are getting toward the end, I'm going to start looking at comments here in just a minute, but 24 watching, only eight likes. I'd appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button. It really helps me out when it comes to video placement. So please visit the like button. And if you don't like it, give me a thumbs down and tell me why, and I'll see if I can do better. All right. So H speed said in companion, can you see both in one screen. I'm going to fire up companion. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm going to bring it up anyway real quick and answer that question. So in companion, no, you have tabs across the top inputs mixes. So no, you cannot, you cannot, you, they have, it's just like the radio. you got tabs. All right. Andre, he got the, uh, flight mode thing. And Charlie, he said 25. I don't remember what the question was. Charlie, you might be right, but I passed that question up. So sorry, buddy. Can't give you credit. <laughs> I'm a tough teacher. Um, let's see. Oh, this is extremely helpful for me to figure out how to crash my quad more quickly. David, yeah, well, you know, on the quad, David, what I'd recommend is just leave everything at 100 and work it out in beta flight. That's that's what I would do. But yeah, hopefully, you know, the main thing is to, is to try and show you guys the relationship from one to the next. You know, we talk about it a lot. And we put the diagrams up, but I wanted to show here's what it here's how it manifests itself that was what i was after with this one all right let's see um elevator trim maybe i'm not sure uh chris you said elevator trim maybe john i'm not i'm not maybe maybe you can uh, help me out give me a little context uh vaz mikey if you're using inav use servo auto trim to level out manual mode yeah vaz mikey you know i've used servo auto trim and i gotta be honest with you man i don't like it I do not like it. Um, and that wasn't, by the way, the plane I'm having the issue with was not iNav. It's actually a co-pilot plane. Um, but yeah, I've, I've tried that servo auto trim and I'm just not a big fan. It seems to give me more problems than it solves. Um, what I, what I tend to do just to answer your, your point is I'll put it in manual mode, fly it around, trim it, get it on the ground, and then adjust the linkages, take the trim out and fly it again until I can throw the plane and have it fly in manual mode with no adjustment. And when I do that, I don't really need auto trim. Auto trim seems to create problems for me. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm just not sure why. Uh, would adjusting the trim mechanically help or was it too fine of an adjust? Yeah. Yeah. Chris, that's it. I, well, I just answered that question. So, uh, Pete button says, how do you set up your flight modes visual on the main page? Oh yeah. A well, good question. Pete. Very good question. Let's do that. Let's do that. So if you guys can see the screen, the question is, how do you get that flight modes thing in there, right? That's the question. So very good question. Hit the telemetry screen and you'll see right here on my main number one screen, you see that little option right there that says flight mode. If you put a check in there, you'll see your flight modes. I just took mine off. So you see that I no longer see flight modes. The, the odd thing is the little index is still there, but it's not showing me any changes in flight modes. So if I go back to the telemetry screen and put another check in there and then back out, um, now you can see I've got flight modes again and I see the changes. Very good question, Pete. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Thanks for clarifying all these cool details. You're welcome. Yet another RC channel. Glad to help. Glad to help. So there you go, guys. That is a, uh, you know, tell your friends, you know, share these videos, tell your friends about them and, and let people know because uh, inputs, mixes and outputs, it, it is literally the heart of OpenTX. You have to have a grip on this part of it because if you don't, you're going to be challenged creating a configuration that works correctly. So I just wanted to make sure that we did a video that, that kind of walked through the actual math and you could so you could see the math and uh, understand that there is a relationship that one feeds the next, which feeds the next, okay? It's really important to understand that relationship on OpenTX because, you know, now we've taken the teeth out of it. There's no mystery here. Now you understand that the inputs feed the mix, which feed the output. So if you understand that, you can go crazy. I'm not saying don't use these tricks like the outputs. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is just understand what's going to happen. If you do, then you can work out some amazing configurations. All right, Charlie RC says, hi, John. Well, hello, Charlie RC and uh, Jeff. Awesome sharing. Thanks, you're welcome. Very welcome. All right, guys, hey, listen, I don't see any other questions or, or even chit chat for me to address. So I think that's a good stopping point for us. 
I hope you like the class on inputs to mixes. If you do and you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Hey, and for those of you who are subscribed, make sure you turn on the notification bell so you know when new stuff hits the channel. And then, you know, leave a comment afterwards. That'd be great. And that's all I've got for today. Thanks for joining me. Have a great one.